Hello friends and welcome back to Silverhawk Farm. If you are new here, my name is Bree. I am the homesteader here on this four acre farm that we have in Lawrence, Kansas, near Lawrence, Kansas, whatever, in Kansas. And today I am building a chicken tractor. Generally chicken tractors are going to be for meat birds. I don't raise meat birds because I don't feel like it. So for some context, I posted a few months ago about hatching some chicks out. That was actually a really brutal time. I haven't really mentioned it or like brought any follow up with it and unfortunately like very much missed the cute chicken phase of being able to record things. You can hear one of them in the background right now if you hear the rooster crowing. But basically what happened was I lost a few chicks um, a few different ways, some of which were really easy to explain, some of which weren't and basically like had a really frustrating time of it. I ended up getting some tractor supply chickens just to basically like keep company the ones that I hatched out because it's a lot of work to raise chicks and if you're doing all that work for only two that's not ideal. So I went and got some chicks from Tractor Supply. I got some Americanas. It said Americanas. I don't know how rigorous they are about breeding standards um, for chicken breeds, but a lot of Americanas are actually just Easter Eggers that are misbranded. Either way, they're gonna lay, lay me some beautiful blue eggs and I love Americanas a lot and Easter Eggers, honestly. I like the mixed breed as well. So I'm really excited to get those out into the field and I actually tried to. I've had them in the goat pen because a snake got into their brooder and killed one. And so I put it in the goat pen so that basically like the goats could scare off any larger predators because while goats will not do anything to protect anyone, they are big enough to scare, to intimidate smaller predators. So I have them in the goat pen. It's been good since then and we i think we fixed all of the problems that we've been having but i tried to introduce them to the chickens like i normally do in the backfield which is my my more calm flock and it didn't go well um, i'm gonna end up getting rid of the rooster that hatched out anyway because i don't need any extra roosters on my farm and yeah sorry buddy you um so the i have four females that are remaining they're actually all americanas and i'm gonna have to get rid of the one that i hatched out that survived which is a bummer but it's just part of the whole farming priorities thing because introducing an extra rooster into my flock would be really stressful so basically they just like they kind of like fought the two roosters fought i thought that they would be fine because usually a juvenile rooster isn't so much of a an issue for them but the females got really really scared and kept like hiding in weird places they weren't really getting along they were terrified and didn't know what was going on so what i'm doing today is i'm going to build a tr chicken tractor just to keep them in for like a week or so while they get acclimated to the outside and i'm going to keep them in the field with the chickens that i'm going to keep them with which is my pro production hens here in the back i'm slowly phasing out the other flock that i have i'll get into that later but basically they've got a lot of bad habits that i don't want them teaching any new hens the hens that i picked up on craig's list last year are some of the chillest chickens i've ever known in my life i want more birds like that so i'm going to keep them there so Basically, I'm gonna build this chicken tractor and then I'm only gonna use it for a couple weeks, but it'll be a helpful kind of in-between for when chickens are too big to be in a brooder, but too small to not get their butts kicked by other chickens when they get introduced. And your mil mileage may vary. Like, I don't know a lot of people who have super big problems introducing new chickens, but I've had such a rough time of it and I have lost birds to chicken on chicken violence so i take it seriously so uh yeah so we're gonna get this started today i don't really i have kind of an idea in my mind of what we're gonna be building i check the materials i'm gonna be using a lot of scrap materials this is not a proper chicken coop i'm not planning on using it super long term or more than a few weeks a year so i'm basically just using wood that we, that we found up in the hayloft of our barn when we moved in. There was a lot of wood up there, like scrap wood, and some of it's in kind of dingy condition, so I might have to do some sanding down or working with warped pieces or screw sticking out, but ultimately free wood with the pr prices of lumber I'm not gonna complain about. And then I'm gonna be using half-inch hardware cloth all the way around, and 
then I'm going to use a PVC like roofing panel to put over the top and I'm going to need to reinforce that midway through because I'm worried that the goats are going to jump on it and I want it to be really secure in case they do. So that's the plan for today. I'm going to be doing a lot of fast forwarded footage while I get this work done and my, my plan for right now is to start with the frame and get the frame built and then enlist the help of my oldest son to do some of the nailing down of the hardware cloth. One disclaimer that I do have is that I've been doing building sort of stuff for a long time. I am not an expert. I am not a safety officer. I don't necessarily know that you should do things exactly the way that I do them. I definitely do like saw wood on the ground. It's not the best setup but we've made it work for a lot of projects here. So um, this is more a lesson and work with what you have than it is um, learn safety tips from Brie when it comes to woodworking. This is your disclaimer, don't be like me. Anyway, I'm gonna get to cutting and then we'll get that frame built. All right, so here I am after we have put the half inch hardware cloth all the way around the edge of the bottom of this, and I'm going to be putting these wooden posts along the bottom and screwing them in here so that it's sandwiched between the inner frame and the outer boards. And then from there, we will add the upper frame to the tops of this. So we're gonna be using two by fours to create a frame for the roofing panel so that we can open that and shut it to get things in and out. And then we'll be done. Um, I'm not sure, certain if I'm gonna finish it up today. We do have some plans for the evening, but if nothing else, I'll be coming out first thing in the morning to finish this up. And I will hopefully have some happy chickens.
All right, welcome back friends. Sorry for the super bright light, but I didn't get out this morning to do this because I wanted to drink coffee. We did finish it up last night. This is actually two days after I last cut and my husband came out and helped me get these staples put into the coop to make sure that this mesh hardware cloth is really solid that nothing's gonna get through it. And then we built this frame, which is just two by fours all the way around with the PVC panel roofing that I'm obviously a fan of. You can tell from the coop behind me. And then we went ahead and used just some very basic hinges and clasp here to go ahead and keep them in. This is a small area for four chickens. If I were planning on keeping them in it for long term, I would make it much, much larger. But with, uh, basically the whole purpose of this is to get them more comfortable outside before introducing them to the big coop because last time they, they really didn't appreciate that. So it's gonna be super temporary. I'm planning on moving them, seeing how they do. And hopefully within a week, we'll probably transition them into the coop that's behind us. And hopefully it'll go well, hopefully it'll go well. So I'm gonna get them moved over. Um, I'm gonna try and get the best angle I can, but the goats are really coming after me with this camera. So I'll see what I can do. I did go ahead and get water and food already moved over so that it's here. And I used my handy dandy hydro hen, which is like an electrolyte. There's a couple of things in it. I know one of the big things is electrolytes, um, but it's basically something you can grab from tractor supply. It's a powder that you put just a little small scoopful into the water you only keep it in there for 24 hours so that i'll put the, give them fresh water tomorrow and that basically just boosts their immune system a little bit so in times of stress like if they're if they're moving anytime i'm moving birds i'm gonna give them hydrohen if some somebody's been sick if they've been acting out just any any problems with chickens i just go straight to add hydrohen so yeah i'll get a move over and hopefully they will transition a little easier than they were Good girl, I know you're scared. Say hi YouTube friends. Say hello YouTube friends. I'm a pretty pretty Easter egger. A little bit scared. It's okay, I'll get you put away. I'm trying to get you handled so you're less scared of me. I've got mellow birds here for you to hang out with. Look cute. Eventually, I promise. He'll protect you. They'll protect you. water you got food latch up all right friends I am back in my barn I am good and sweaty once again that is the theme of this episode is Brie gets really sweaty trying to help chickens um, it seems like they're doing all right the roosters mad at me the hens seem pretty calm I think that the rooster that was in with them was stressing them a little bit so I think them having their own space roosterless for a little bit is gonna be a great help and I have posted the rooster on Facebook. Hopefully well, that works out. I'll keep y'all posted and uh, he'll probably be out of here this weekend, which usually it only takes a few days um, if you post to Facebook groups. So yeah, uh, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I had a super fun time building that coop. That's, all, that's only half true. I had a fun time recording and I hope that it was helpful for you. If it was, let me know if like building type videos are something that you want to see. I know it's very specific and niche and I'm not an expert at it, but hopefully what the takeaway from this video was you don't have to have perfect or pretty things to have functional things and you definitely don't need to spend like $600 on a coop that's going to break in four seconds. So uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will speak to you soon and I hope you're having a really wonderful time wherever you are. Thank <laughs> you.